At the beginning of the Battlefield 4 beta phase, we took the time to try out some of the old known glitches and tricks from Battlefield 3 in the beta and the results of those recordings you will see now. We always speak from the perspective of somebody that comes from Battlefield 3, so a tiny bit of previous knowledge is helpful to actually be able to understand all the different points that we are going to go over now. The first thing that we tried was the heady quick start. The only thing that you have to do is to quickly switch from the pilot to the gunner seat and then back to the pilot seat and you will have full thrust immediately without having to wait for the startup of the engine. Completely new in the beta phase was the damage system on vehicles where you could get critical hits which led to the tank being immobilized or, or with the heli telling you that its rotor was offline. This is less of a problem if you're in a wide and open area, but if you have to maneuver through the skyscrapers and you lose the controllability over your helicopter, this might be a real problem. In this situation, you can either wait it out until your heli has regained full thrust or you simply use the fire extinguisher perk. Just as in Battlefield 3, it makes a lot of sense if the gunner has equipped the fire extinguisher perk for the pilot seat, so in case you take a critical hit like here from a stinger missile, you can quickly switch seats, use the fire extinguisher and then get out of the area. Now let's talk about the so-called head glitching. What you're gonna need for this is an object that is about as high as your player model. The way that it works in Battlefield 4 and that's how it's worked in Battlefield 3 in the past is that bullets aren't actually fired from the gun that the player model is holding but always are coming out of the eyes of the player. If you assume that the weapon itself that is held by the player is the reference point, you can actually shoot through these objects and therefore head glitch. Our next topic is the so-called RPG reload glitch. The way that it works in Battlefield 3, we've made a video about that, you'll find it in the quick tips section, is that you cannot skip over the reload time of the RPG but over the reload animation. The way that it works is that you fire your RPG and then quickly get back in a vehicle where the reload animation is going to run in the background and you'll be able to get out of the vehicle with a fully loaded weapon. Sadly, also dust hits with RPGs are back in the Battlefield 4 beta. As you can see here, the helicopter is being hit, but nothing happens. Moreover, we've of course tried out how much damage RPG shots do to tanks in accordance to the hit zone and the angle of impact. So, an RPG shot in the front armor with a 90 degree angle does roughly 23 damage. An RPG shot in the side with a 90 degree angle does 36 damage. Moreover, you get a critical hit which means that you can move and crawl speed for a few seconds only. An RPG shot to the rear of the tank deals 53 damage. Moreover, you're immobilized, can't move at all and you can't even rotate your chassis. RPG shots of that sort therefore are extremely dangerous because a second shot to the same spot will inevitably destroy the tank. And the same thing applies to RPG shots from above to the turret. You get 55 damage and the same immobilization which makes tanks and street canyons like here at Siege of Shanghai extremely vulnerable. In the beta, RPGs could lock onto laser designated targets, which as the latest patch notes have told us, has been taken out of the game already. But only so much for that, a laser designated RPG hitting the turret of the tank from above dealt up to 75 damage. In contrast to Battlefield 3, the Gunner MG of tanks does a lot of damage to helicopters now. As a tryout, we here let ourselves get shut up by the MG and until it overheats, it roughly does 75 damage. Again, that's a lot. If the damage will stay like that in the final release of the game, it's probably a good idea to fire at helicopters as soon as you see them, simply because the MG is so effective against helis now. In the beta, the revive mechanics have been changed drastically when compared to Battlefield 3. First of all, the energy storage of the defibrillator is now limited, which means that you can only revive three guys in a short time window. Moreover, if you want to revive your teammate to 100%, you have to rub your defibrillators for roughly three seconds. If you don't do it, if you don't charge up your defibrillators before the revive, the teammate will only get revived with 20 HP. 
The next revive on the same player that just has been revived is only possible if he stayed alive for 10 seconds after your last revive. Otherwise, if he dies in the 10 seconds after the last revive, he becomes non-revivable. This brings an end to the revive trains of Battlefield 3 where you could accept and give out endless revives. Also, the good old crosshair glitch doesn't work anymore, which allowed you to transfer your first shot ADS accuracy to the hipfire accuracy. We made a quick tip video about that, you'll find it on our channel. At the end of the Battlefield 4 beta, Level Battlefield organized a 32 vs 32 show match. One of the teams was led by me and at the end of the matches I had the opportunity to talk to one of the EA guys that participated in the games and share some of my personal thoughts with him. In particular the so-called D-flares or infinite stinger defense glitch which allows attack or transport helicopters to drop an infinite amount of flares attracted a lot of attention. With lock-on weapons, headies were practically invulnerable during this show match, which created, let's say, some sort of amazement about this glitch abuse. I directed the attention to the completely screwed up PLD plus RPG system, which effectively forced helicopter pilots to use this glitch in order to just stay alive. The latest patch notes have already told us that this PLD plus RPG system is not going to make it to the final release of the game. If this will also be the case for the infinite flares glitch, nobody knows. We delivered the correct information. It's up to DICE and EA to make the best out of it right now. As always, thanks for tuning in. If you liked it, then we're linking to our latest commentary right here and also to our friend Dimorok who recorded Tank tutorials showing which tank can ram which tank, how much damage the MGs do and so on. So please pay him a visit.